G'day guys, Gundam Russ back once again and a little Bentley here with me too. Today guys, I wanted to talk to you guys about PlayStation mod chips. Now this video was inspired by the last gamer, uh, his latest story mode edition video um, talked about how he got involved with the PlayStation mod chips. It's a fantastic story and I highly recommend checking it out and we'll leave the link in the description for you to have a look at that. But I wanted to talk to you guys about my um, my sort of history and, and how I came about getting my PlayStation mod chip in my PlayStation. And it basically happened, you know, I was very young at the time, back in the 90s, and the PlayStation 1 had been out for a while. Now, I had, wasn't really big into gaming at the time, but I found the love of gaming through my Auntie Leslie, or I call her Auntie Lily. Um, she introduced me to the PlayStation 1 and she had this game called Abe's Odyssey and wow, this game blew me away. I absolutely loved everything about it, having to save these little Mudokan aliens. I was big into aliens and this game was just so intriguing and loved every minute of it. Um, and that um, got me um, wanting a PlayStation and I, over time um, with my pocket money I managed to save enough money and I went out and bought my very own PlayStation 1. And you guessed it guys, I went out and bought Abe's Odyssey and that love for PlayStation is still with me today. And I have to thank my auntie for that and um, because she was a huge influence of getting me into that sort of gaming scene. But how the mod chip came about, and I still remember this um, to this day, was my brother, my big brother coming over and he was talking to mum and dad in regards to the PlayStation and saying that you could get this new thing called a mod chip and I was very intrigued to, to know all about it and he basically went on to say that you know through pirates you can get these burnt games and at the time these games were about ten dollars I think but compared to what we we're paying in the shops this was huge now if I was getting games often uh, the only way I could afford them was when they went to a thing called platinum um, here in Australia, which I think is what you guys would have had everywhere and that was the only way I could really afford games uh, You know trying to get them in the original black label was uh, very expensive. So um, Yeah, so knowing about these uh, Burnt games was just like oh my god. This is really cool I, You know I can afford to get five games instead of having having one So you can imagine how excited I was about this at the time I was getting around about five dollars pocket money for my parents now this was, uh, when you think about how much the mod chip was, being $100, didn't have a job, uh, I was still at school, and to know that it was $100, I was like, oh my god, this is uh, going to take me quite some time, but I was determined to get this mod chip, I was like, you know, I've got some games that I can could try and finish, um, and in that time, I'm going to save up. So I saved really hard, I saved up all those weeks, and then I finally had enough money to get the mod chip. Um, as I said, at the time I think I bought it, it was around about $100. Um, there had been more, um, at, you know, before that there had been a lot more expensive, but prices were coming down with there being more competition with people being able to put in mod chips. So my first game that I got burnt um, after I got the mod chip uh, was Tony Hawk Pro Skater. And man, was that awesome. Uh, I remember paying uh, $5 for that one. And as I said, this was at a time when, you know, burnt games, when they first started, depending on who you went to, some, some people would charge you $10, um, but through one of mum's uh, friends, um, she, I was able to get a bit of a discount and gone for five. And Tony Hawk's Pro Skater, man, was that an awesome game. That inspired me to skateboard myself, and then that led into things like BMX as well. One cool story I really want to tell you guys, and it might, it might make you laugh, it always... Uh, is a funny thing that I like to think about, but these uh, pirates would give you a like a list, a printout from their printer, and it would have uh, a listing of all the games, generally within alphabetical or depending on who you're getting them from, and it would list all the games they had available for for you to burn. They had, and a lot of these um, pirates they would get these games um, normally through. Uh, rental stores, so they'd go down to Video Easy or their local corner video game uh, rental store. Because back in the 90s, video game rental stores were everywhere, and I wish today they still were around. But um, yeah, they would have a list of games, 
and you could choose one. And I remember going through and going, oh yeah, cool, cool, yeah, I've got that one. And I still remember coming through and come to this game that had Metal Gear Solid. Now I was like, oh, Metal Gear Solid, this sounds like a, a good car racing game. <laughs> And because I was big into car racing, I, 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 was, I was really naive. I didn't, I didn't have the internet at the time and I was thinking, you know, oh, this is cool. I need another racing game. Don't know what this is about, but you know what? Five bucks. I don't care. I'm getting this game, whatever. And I get this game, open up the tray, pop the disc in, and away we go. And I was like, the title screen comes up and I'm like, and we get into it and it's like, this isn't a car racing game at all. What the hell? And, um, oh, it was so funny. Um, I remember like going to my brother and saying, I thought Metal Gear Solid was a racing game. And he was just like, he was paying me out as like, as if to say like, you idiots, like, of course it's not a racing game, but, um, yeah, I don't know why I'm telling this, but I just thought it was, it was something funny. And, uh, yeah, it was, the mod chip was just something, you know, truly special to me it was um, a way you know I wouldn't have been able to afford to buy a lot of these games I wouldn't even know about a lot of these series if it wasn't for the mod chip so um, yeah I just wanted to talk to you guys uh, in regards to this the only bad time I had with uh, a pirate was this one time where they were trying to burn me Final Fantasy 9 and I ended up having to go out and buy the, the proper version um, and he burnt them onto the four discs, supposedly. Um, and I paid, I had to pay $5 a disc, so it was $20, it was a lot of money. And I get it home, doesn't work. So I, take, I go back to him and say, look, mate, uh, it didn't work. Um, are you able to burn me um, and have another go at it? And he was just like, yeah, I can do that, but it's gonna cost you another 20 bucks. And I was like, what do you mean it's going to cost me another 20 bucks? And he was like, well, I'm using another four discs, so it's going to be another 20 bucks. And I was like, really? Oh my God. And I was really upset about it. And my um, dad at the time was basically like, you know, we'll, we'll give you another $20, just give, give it a go. And, you know, he felt, dad felt sorry for me, so did mum. And yeah, the same thing happened. And then I was just like, it doesn't work. And I tried to ask the guy, look, can I at least get $20 back? Um, and he was just like, no, nah, not, not having it. So th let me just say that guy, I never bought games from again, but that was the only time out of all the history of getting burnt games that I had an issue. But other than that, um, it allowed me to, you know, discover so many great series. So yeah, just a little bit of a, a story sort of, um, uh, thing I wanted to talk to you guys in regards to the mod chip and, um, and a big thanks to Joel from the last gamer for inspiring this, uh, video. Alright guys, I uh, hope you enjoyed. If you did, leave a big thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe, fools. See you later. <laughs>